When going through this video, many of the angles will be referred to with regards to anatomical position, not an X or Y axis. Some things to know before watching the video. When I say the hand, I am referring to the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. When I say elbow, I am referring to the humeral ulnar joint, which consists of the humerus and ulna. When I say knee or knee joint, I am referring to the joint with the femur, tibia, and patella. I'm going to break the serve down into three phases. The first phase is the preparation phase. In the preparation phase, the whole body is rotated slightly to the right at about 45 degrees on the transverse plane. The right arm is abducted to around 180 degrees on the frontal plane. The humeral ulnar joint is at about an angle of approximately 80 degrees and the glenohumeral joint is about 130 degrees. The right knee joint is a bent to approximately 145 degrees. Next is the striking phase. From the preparation phase to the striking phase, the action analysis is the glenohumeral joint is flexion of the pectoralis major, posterior deltoid, biceps brachii, and coracobrachialis, horizontal abduction of supraspinatus and deltoids, and rotation of latissimus dorsi and deltoids. In the striking phase, the elbow goes anterior down the sagittal plane while the hand goes posterior. The arm extends anteriorly until the hand strikes the volleyball. When striking, the humeral ulnar joint should be at an angle of approximately 130 degrees and the glenohumeral joint should be at about 144 degrees. The body will rotate back down the transverse plane to zero degrees. The upper body will move slightly forward, so if the foot is kept on the ground, the knee joint will now be at about 147 degrees. Last is the follow-through phase. The analysis from the striking phase to the follow-through phase is flexion of posterior deltoids, trapezius, and pectoralis major, extension of trapezius, anterior deltoids, latissimus dorsi, and teres major, abduction of pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, anterior and posterior deltoids. In this phase, the arm fully extends through the ball anteriorly down the sagittal plane and rotates downward to complete the serve. Here we're going to look at the amount of force being put on the volleyball and the momentum. As we can see, the ball traveled 16 meters in one second, which makes the velocity 16 meters per second. Our acceleration is also 16 meters per second, but it's squared. To figure out the amount of force, we're going to do the mass times acceleration. And the amount of mass that is in a volleyball is typically 0.26 kilograms. And so we're going to do 0.26 times the acceleration we said was 16. And we're going to get 4.16 newtons to equal our force. The object's momentum is directly proportional to its mass and velocity. And so as we said, our velocity is 16 meters per second. And so we multiply that by the mass, which will also get us 4.16 kilograms times meters per second to get our momentum.